What's up guys, Jay's Two Cents here, and it should come as no surprise to my long-term viewers that I am a huge advocate for water cooling. It's, it's not necessary, but it's fun, and it definitely allows you to get more out of your components by overclocking them and keeping them cooler. Keeping your components cool extends the lifespan. But one of the most common comments I get on my videos, especially from people who've not really done water cooling before, is, Jay, you're, you're doing it wrong. You're putting things in the wrong order. You should have a radiator in between your CPU and your GPU, or you know, your, your GPU going into your CPU is gonna heat it up and you're just putting hot water into it and it's unnecessary. And hopefully by the end of this video, I can prove that what I've been saying all along, that loop order for components doesn't matter, with the exception of the reservoir has to feed the pump. But other than that, it doesn't matter if you go CPU to RAD or CPU to GPU to RAD or CPU to RAD to GPU, whatever, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. That's what I'm gonna try and prove by the end of this video and hopefully I can stand by my, my claims for all these years. We you know it does matter protecting your internet experience. So that's why NordVPN has sponsored today's video. And right now they are offering my viewers 77% off a three year membership. And they are adding more servers across the world every single week. In fact, right now they are up to 4,048 servers in 62 countries, including the Middle East, Asia, Europe, and the Americas. Now VPN stands for a virtual private network and that is important to all of us because it keeps people from being able to spy on our information. And NordVPN doesn't keep any logs. So there's no log whatsoever of what you are doing on the internet when connected to NordVPN. So start taking your internet privacy serious with NordVPN and save 77% off a three year membership by using offer code jace 2 cents at checkout. See the link in the description for more details. So what we're gonna be doing right now is a couple of different tests. We are gonna see what our idle temps are, and this has been running now for a couple of hours, actually. Uh, yep, for about an hour and a half. We've already done some load tests and we've let it come back down to idle to see what our temperatures are, and things are pretty damn impressive. So in terms of our baseline, just to see where these components sit right now under uh, idle conditions, doesn't matter what or order they are, obviously under idle, nothing's pumping heat into the loop. We are sitting at 20C idle on the GPU. I don't know if you guys can see this or not. 20C. Obviously we've got a, a, some chill in the room right here. It's only at about 70 degrees Fahrenheit in this room. Sorry, I don't know what the Celsius is. I'm still American, I can't help that. Our CPU is idling at 27C. So as you can see, things are running extremely cool. This is just distilled water also. There's no coolant, there's no, or no additives, no anti-corrosives, we're not leaving this loop together. It's just got a little bit of pink dye in there so that you guys can see the fluid, obviously a little bit better. And it looks better on camera. So that is our baseline. Now the order that we're going right here is we are going pump to CPU, CPU to GPU, and GPU back, wait, hold on. How did I have this going? <laughs> <laughs> now in terms of loop order, we are going out from the pump into the CPU, out of the CPU into the GPU, out of the GPU into the radiator, out of the radiator back, into the reservoir, which is I think a very typical loop someone would run. CPU gets cooled first, GPU second, then the RAD, sometimes CPU, then the RAD, then the GPU, but this is our condition and these were our idle temps. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna load the CPU up. We're gonna let it run for 10 minutes under OCCT. If you guys have ever run OCCT, you know that this can absolutely hammer a system. And I'm running the medium data set. Small data sets just overheats the CPU just instantly and that's part of the nature of that test. That would be good for like LN2 testing, but we are gonna be doing medium data sets. And what we're gonna be looking at here is to see under load, what happens if we run the CPU into the GPU while the CPU is under load? Is the GPU temp gonna come up? Well, it probably will, but not because of the fact that the CPU is heating up the GPU, but because of the fact that the CPU is heating up the loop as a whole. Remember, my claims have always been, and this is the way the thermal dynamics actually works. This isn't just a claim. The total temperature of the loop is gonna be controlled by the thermal capacity of the radiator. Regardless of where the radiator is in the loop, the rad is responsible for the temperature of the loop as a whole. This is not like a car. We have a thermostat closing off the flow to let it sit in the radiator longer. It's just constantly cycling. What I would have loved to have done is had temperature probes on each one of these you know, outlets to be able to see what the coolant temperature is. But unfortunately, I don't have any of those sensors. So we just have to go off component temp at the end of the day, that's what actually matters. Now with the Vardar fans running at 100% in this 240 by 40 mil rad, I don't think this CPU is gonna be enough to heat up this loop as a whole and to you know have there be drastic changes on the total temperature of the system. But you can see our CPU cores, 
maybe you can't see, it's really small, but our CPU cores went into the 50s and our GPU did jump up 1C, but uh, I guess we're gonna see what happens at the end of the 10 minute test. So we'll let it run for 10 minutes. I think that's gonna be enough to equalize this loop and we'll see what the temperatures do. Okay, so we've been running for over 12 minutes, 12 minutes and 20 seconds now, and our GPU's temperature, remember it's under, uh, not under load at all, went from 20 to 24. Now on the surface, that's when someone would say, see, see it heated up the GPU, but we obviously have to reverse this test to see if the same, if my claim is true that the temperature as a whole went up, which means if we then go from GPU to CPU and then to radiator to reservoir and the temps do the same thing, then you can see that, well, hey, if the CPU was after the GPU, how was it heating up the GPU? But we noticed something here when we started to take a look at our temperatures. Look at this, this is our GPU line right here. Every few seconds, something is triggering the GPU to go under a little bit of load, up to about 20% load. So right about here, we are sitting at 11, 7, 10, so it's like 15%, 11%. You'll notice as I move the mouse around too, look, look at the GPU usage. The GPU has actually got a part in rendering the mouse. So as we move the mouse, it goes under more load. But with it just sitting here, we notice these intervals of the GPU doing something. I'm not sure if OCCT is pinging the GPU for information or if it's putting some sort of a slight load on the GPU. It's possible. I mean, there's a GPU 3D tab right here. But yeah, it's, it's not doing anything with the GPU whatsoever in this test. So this could very well be what caused the GPU temp to go up and not the CPU at all because the CPU has been sitting steadily at 60 to 61 C. So if you look at our CPU temperature line right here, you can see the curve where it came up and then this is the test kind of doing its thing and it actually came back down slightly. So our temperatures have been extremely consistent on the CPU, which means that our loop temperature has equalized and it's not getting any hotter. That means we have not exceeded the cooling capability of our radiator. But that's why I have all these quick disconnects on here because now I can rearrange the loop how I want it after I go ahead and stop this test and let the temperatures come back down to normal. Before I do that though, I want to point out when I stop the test, you can see this interval pinging on the GPU stopped. It's now pretty consistent right here at zero or one. So I don't, again, I don't know what OCCT is doing. I didn't want to use Prime95 and I didn't want to use um, ADA64 because I don't have a key for it right now. So OCCT, I just want to use it to get heat in there, but obviously it's doing something with the GPU. But our temp though did come back down to 21C already in the last like minute or so. So this is why we're using quick disconnects obviously because we can just push the button and then check that out. We got what, one little drop of coolant right there. I like to use OCCT because as you can see, it literally hammers the CPU. We've got the order now switched around. So just like before, we are going to start our test. We're gonna run it for at least 10 minutes to let the temperatures kind of go up. My prediction on this is that we're still gonna see 24C on the GPU which then would be good enough to just say, hey, you know, we are, we're, we're done. But then I have to do GPU tests. Everyone knows GPUs put way more heat into a loop than a CPU. So as expected, we've been running for 12 minutes and 30 seconds, the same as before. Look at that, 24C on the GPU and our CPU is sitting at 62C, 65. Of course it's fluctuating, but you can see the curve is definitely like flattened out. Here are those strange intervals again. But uh, Phil and I were talking, we don't think this is enough to actually make the GPU temperature go up because the core speed doesn't increase. It's just a random like two or 3% up to 10% worth of load for like a split second. So what we're gonna do now is we are gonna go ahead and let stop, we're gonna stop this test and we are going to let the temperature equalize. Now we're gonna let it come back down to its idle temperatures and then we're gonna run a GPU load to see what happens to the CPU. How much does the CPU come up? And then we're gonna switch the order back to the way it was, where the GPU is not directly feeding the CPU like it is now, and see if the temperatures have changed. I think based on the test we've just seen though, you guys know what to expect. We'll probably see this, the CPU temperature come up because of just the increased temperature of the loop as a whole. Ah, that stupid wire. And then we're gonna run a GPU test. We're gonna let the, the GPU loop heaven benchmark and get nice and hot, find its max temperature, record the CPU temp versus idle, and then we're gonna switch it back to where the CPU goes into the GPU and do the same you know, test again. Based on what we've already seen, I think you guys can, can kind of already form a hypothesis on what's gonna happen. We're gonna see the CPU temperature come up slightly, but I think we're gonna see it come up slightly when we reverse it as well, because again, the entire temperature of the system as a whole is coming up. So I guess a good testament to the fact that we have a good controlled environment is once again, we let everything sit, our CPU hit 28C, 
and our GPU is back down to 20C idle. Yeah, those are pretty impressive temperatures, I think, given the fact that we only have a single 240 rad. Something else I should have probably mentioned before all the CPU tests, it is overclocked to 4.3 gigahertz on all eight cores at 1.35 volts. So we were pumping more heat into it on purpose. So we're gonna just let heaven run now for however long it takes for the GPU temperatures to stop increasing. So this might take longer than 10 minutes. So what we're gonna actually be checking here is again, our max GPU temperature. I think we know that's gonna be the same no matter what. We wanna see what our max CPU temperature average is uh, under load. Because remember, this is still putting a slight load on the CPU, not a huge load, but a slight load. And we wanna see if this temperature comes down. Because remember, we currently have it feeding GPU to CPU back to radiator. So then if we switch that order, we go CPU, GPU to radiator, does the overall CPU temperature come down? And then I guess vice versa, does the GPU temperature come up with the CPU feeding it? Based on our previous test, which was on a smaller scale, I think you guys already know how this is gonna turn out, but if I don't actually complete the test, then it gives you guys room to kind of challenge the results. I guess you guys are gonna probably challenge it anyway, but that's okay, I've been doing this now for like 15 years and I already know what the results are going to be, but I wanted to at least give you guys a video that you can reference when you see people talk about this on forums and Reddit and stuff to be like, hey, go and check out this video done by this guy who knows nothing in a very unscientific way that proves a point. So we've been running for about 15 minutes, maybe a little more. Uh, you can see our GPU temperature is sitting at 33C. It's been going between 32 and 33, and that's pretty much where it's maxed out. But the CPU temperature, this is gonna be kind of hard to gauge the maximum temp because it's fluctuating so much, right? Depending on what the scene is doing, how much FPS, because right now it's 150 FPS. So obviously this is gonna fluctuate, but I guess what we can look at here is our GPU max temp was 33, so we know that. But I guess this isn't even that helpful though because it still shows 72 max, which from our previous test, I forgot to clear this. So let's just go with, I mean, I guess if it goes any hotter than like 47, 48 C, I don't know, I, I don't think anything's gonna change to be honest with you. But now we have to flip that order around after we let it cool down. So much waiting in doing these tests. I mean, it's cool and all, it takes forever to just let it equalize, let it cool down. For you guys, it's like only a few minutes. For us, it's like hours worth of stuff. So we've been running for about another 15 minutes and it looks like the temperature came up about one and a half C because it'll go between 34 and 35 where before it went from 32 to 33, sitting mostly at 33. So we came up about one, one and a half C. Temperatures are the same. GPU temperatures are, like I said, up about one C. CPU temperatures, are doing the exact same thing as before. So doing the GPU test now, again, the same result with a difference of about one C. And I actually think that that might be the temperature in the room came up ever so slightly. It is getting pretty warm here in California. But as you can see right here, the tests don't really lie. The order of the components, like I've been saying all along, make absolutely no difference to the temperature. The radiator is gonna control the temperature of the loop as a whole. So if you were to measure the temperature that's going into the radiator and the temperature of the fluid coming out of the radiator, you would find they'd probably be one or two C difference at the hottest and the coolest point of the loop. And that is not enough to make one part heat up another. What's heating up is the fluid as a whole. Well, it means that you don't have to worry about trying to hit a particular loop order. It means that you can actually run components in the order that makes the cleanest route if that's what you're looking for. Unless you want a really busy loop that looks a lot like this, you could then cross over tubes and maybe make that look cool. But don't rack your brains over trying to find the right loop order. Just have your reservoir feeding the pump and everything else, just whatever is the cleanest and easiest to route. So I'm gonna put this to rest. I'm not gonna revisit this topic. Anyone that wants to uh, basically make the comment of, hey, you know, your loop order is wrong, just share them this video. If you guys have seen anyone on forums claiming, hey, you can't do that. You're gonna heat up your CPU with your GPU if you go that order, share them this video so that once and for all, people will shut up and not pass around false information. Physics are physics, they don't lie. Guys, I'm gonna go. Thanks for watching and putting up with this. If you've already known this, then no surprise to you. Maybe you learned something here today. If you did, why don't you give this video a like? And now I've gotta tear this monstrosity part. Thanks for watching guys. And as always, we'll see you in the next one. You really want me to disconnect one while it's running, but I'm not gonna. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Fine, I'll do it. No! <laughs>